Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss, back again with another video. And today we're gonna take a look at the iPhone 6S in 2019. Now let me stop. Y'all know I wouldn't be caught dead using an iPhone 6S in 2019. But my homeboy Travis wants to make a video on it, so Travis, do your thing. Oh yeah, let's not forget one important detail. Ladies and gentlemen, White Shoes is back in the building. White shoes. white shoes, calm down. All right. Well, I did the iPhone 6S uh, video a little while ago, and I just kind of did it as an experiment. Would people be interested in an older phone in 2019? And uh, people seemed to like it. And uh, when I didn't release the video last weekend, people started getting on me, asking me where the video was. I got to say, I was really surprised by that. So I wanted to do something a little special, do this video completely different than my normal style of doing videos. So let's give it a shot. I've seen, I've seen people do this before. How does this work? Well, this is different. I have a feeling you shouldn't get used to this type of quality in my future videos. But you know what? I want to do something different for the iPhone 6S. So let's do this. I'm going to tell you every single thing about this iPhone 6S when it comes to 2019, right after this. This, this is, uh, you know you listen to. What up, players? Welcome back, and for all you new people, welcome. My name's Travis, and I do tech videos every single week and have a blast doing them. If that sounds like fun to you, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Anything I talk about will be in the description below, but for now, let's just get into the video. The question I want to answer with this video is actually pretty simple. I saw a comment in one of my videos saying that in 2019, the flagships of yesteryear are actually better than the mid-range phones of this year. So is the almost four-year-old iPhone 6S one of those phones? If you remember, the iPhone 6S came out uh, about a year-ish after the iPhone 6, and the iPhone 6 is most well known for Bengate, where people were bending these things left and right for no good apparent reason. Some of you may remember that that's actually how Unbox Therapy became, uh, you know, famous. That's, that was his thing. But this actually marked a bunch of other really cool innovations in the smartphone game by Apple, including 3D Touch, a better Touch ID, and really just a really amazing processor that still holds up today. And I grabbed this at Walmart to a locked carrier for about $150. And if you look online, you actually can find it for about that price. So the question is, can you get a $150 smartphone go through 2019 and not feel like you're actually missing out on anything. Performance is gonna be one of the first questions you have. Of course, it's not the A12 chip. As a matter of fact, it's the A9 chip, which while much more powerful than the A8, is nowhere near as powerful as the A12. But as you can see here, playing games on it, which would be one of the most processor intensive things, is no problem. I mean, if you can get some PUBG in, what are you complaining about? Next is loading of apps, because really you're using your phone for apps, texting, social media, that sort of thing. The loading time on this, okay, I'm gonna put it right next, as you can see here, to an uh, iPhone XR with the A12 chip. Now, yes, the A12 chip is gonna be a little bit faster, as you can see here, but maybe a second or half a second but as soon as the apps are actually loaded, you'll notice there's like no difference at all. Once they're loaded in RAM, iOS is excellent at keeping them there for instantaneous uh, accessibility. So I started to wonder how could I actually stress the processor in a way to see the difference between this and a current uh, level mobile processor. And the best thing I come up with is uh, my editing software that I use for all of my videos. LumaFusion on the iPad is amazing. It also works on iOS for your phones. So I decided to take an exact clip and edit on both phones, the iPhone XR and the iPhone 6S, and see which one finished first. It should come as no surprise that the iPhone XR finished first, but when you look at this video, you can see that it's not that much difference. The question is, is it five years and almost $500 difference? I'll let you be the judge, but two seconds to me isn't worth $500, at least not for anything legal. So if the processing power is, yes, less, but in everyday use, pretty much the same, then what about the form factor? Now, I'm using the 6S, not the 6S Plus. 
which to be perfectly honest, I've, as someone who's been using at least a 5.5 inch screen for the better part of five or six years, this is a really small screen at 4.7 inches. Um, I, I don't know, I, that's the one thing I don't like about it, but as far as the, the look and feel, feels good in the hands. Ladies, you know the procedures. Travis, I need you to calm down too. So as far as the actual look and feel of this thing, it's actually really good. Now, they reinforce the, um, the phone itself so you can't bend it. I don't want if I bend it right on camera, it's gonna be a terrible thing. Um, <laughs> because it would shatter all the glass in my hand. Let me try that again. Okay, so the look and feel is really good. I actually really enjoy the way this thing fits in my hand, despite the fact that it's a lot smaller than the phones that I'm used to. They also reinforced it from being, it's actually anti-bend proof, I suppose, after the iPhone 6 controversy. And uh, the camera's still pretty good. I'll show you some shots here. I guess at the end of the day, like, is the 2019 version of the iPhone, the uh, iPhone XR at this point and the 11 coming up, really worth several hundred dollars more? Now, one thing they did do right that many years ago is that this thing is really thin and it's great if you don't have a case on it and for 150 bucks you probably could could go without putting a case on this thing look how thin this thing is and just the overall industrial feel of the iphone 6 success and even part of the 7 was really something special now some people actually like this form factor along with the button more than the iphone 10r and 10s and 10s max now i don't know how i feel about it specifically because i'm actually starting to kind of like this form factor. I like the way it feels. I like the button. I like the tactile nature of everything. Although I've become used to full screen phones, I think in, in I don't know, when I think about it, maybe this was actually the pinnacle of design. I have read a lot of times in my comment section that people really love their iPhone successes before they upgraded to the iPhone 10 and 10R. That really says a lot about the design, the feature set, and the processing power that Apple put into this phone almost four years ago. You know, one thing I wasn't sure about when I first started using this phone was would I like the size? Now, I'll be honest, um, that's the one thing that I don't like. The battery life has been really good. It's actually got me at least a day and a half each day, which is really important to me because obviously if you don't have battery life, you don't have a phone. But other than that, the fact that it runs so fast on iOS 12 and the fact that it's very usable, the camera's good, I have to say I'm a little bit surprised but I would actually keep this thing and use it as a daily driver. I just need the plus version. So I will say one thing, despite the fact that the size is smaller than I would normally like, it's grown on me. It's something that I would consider. And certainly if I needed to get a phone for a loved one or someone who's not overly tech savvy, I would probably get one for them. And isn't that what's important? If the thing works on a daily basis and it's not overly slow, then why do we need to have the most cutting edge hardware? As a matter of fact, most average consumers don't. And that's something we all need to remember. I have found myself, despite the fact being a tech gadget gearhead, being able to survive with this thing very easily. And as a matter of fact, starting to consider, maybe I shouldn't spend so much money on these things. When people are asking for over a thousand dollars for new phones and you can get one that's just as good in many ways for substantially less, what are we really doing by paying that money? Perhaps what we're doing is feeding the monster. And that's an unfortunate reality where we continue to throw money in the monster, they continue to raise the price, and then we complain about the price. I don't think we're really thinking this through. You also have to think a lot about the actual specs of this thing. Now, it was groundbreaking when it came out, but let's be honest, do you really need groundbreaking anymore? I mean, even if it is four years ago, probably everything you're doing now can be done on this thing. So who is this for? Well, I think it's almost for everybody, at least anyone who likes iOS. I'm sure I know you Samsung knights out there are gonna hate on this, but this thing can get it done. It can get everything done, and it's mainly because of the way Apple supports their hardware. And updates with Apple are amazing. Here's the thing, I opened this thing up, even though it might have been in a package for a couple years, it immediately upgraded to the newest version of iOS, iOS 12 as of the recording of this video. That's something that doesn't necessarily happen on Android, and it's entirely too frustrating for an Android lover like me. If you can get a phone that's almost four years old to the latest software and it runs well, that's a win. This is both good and bad for Apple because now you can buy a less expensive phone and have it work just as well as a brand new one. And on the Android side of things, this just makes it look kind of silly because now you've got to wait for your update from Google, then the manufacturer of your phone, and then, at least in America, your carrier. 
And that can put many months between you and the latest and greatest software. I know it has for me on my Note 9 on T-Mobile. Whereas if you have an iPhone, you get the update the exact day it comes out. So again, who is this for? It's for most everybody. I will say one thing, I was really surprised by how much I actually started to fall in love with this phone. <sighs> I don't know. Could I be seduced by an old iPhone? So I consider this almost a social experiment. I was very surprised by the fact that I really legitimately could not only go iOS fully if I really wanted to, but an old version of the phone. Listen, I just use apps for what I need them for. I don't need to be the fastest. And as you've seen, the performance is almost exactly the same. And for in some cases, seven to $800 less, I'm more than willing to keep this. As a matter of fact, I think this might be my secondary. So, no more iPhone 6S videos. Had a lot of fun making this video. Every once in a while, I wanna keep you on your toes. Don't get used to this if you're new here to the channel, but I wanna thank my man Daniel for helping me out with this video. Without him, I couldn't have done it. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below and in the end cards. Without him, this wouldn't have happened. And let me tell you something, it almost didn't happen. If this video helped you out in any way, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if it didn't, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. I'm here every single week having a blast. Hope to see you again real soon. Peace and love, peace and love.